Am I free to go? I want my lawyer now. I want a lawyer right now. Mr. Nolan, it's for you. My name is Patrick Nolan. I'm an attorney licensed in the state of Missouri. This is Pat Talks Law. Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about something, and we're not using a script today. I'm not doing any of that. We are going to be addressing the recent Missouri Supreme Court decision in State v. Smith. Um, for those of you that want to look that up and follow along, it is you can go to CaseNet, and the case number is SC97811. You're looking for the signed majority opinion. And I'm doing something a little different. I'm actually going to be presenting a posting that was written by a fellow attorney. Um, his name is Carl Ward. He is one of the top DWI attorneys in the state of Missouri, if not the top. Mr. Ward has an extensive career and I am wouldn't presume to call him my friend, but I will say that I've known him for a few years and he is a person of impeccable integrity and is quite brilliant. On January 14th, the Missouri Supreme Court gave law enforcement officers an unbridled tool to pull over every single motorist. That's you and me. Um, while driving our vehicles on any highway in the state of Missouri, and to charge us with a crime that is punishable by up to 15 days in jail and a fine up to $750 or both. As a result, our Fourth Amendment rights to be left alone when traveling just completely went out the window. The explanation to this as given by Mr. Ward is, in State v. Smith, that Supreme Court SC 97811 decided January 14th of 2020, the issue presented to the court was whether or not briefly crossing over the fog line. Now the fog line, for those of you who don't know, is the line, the white line on the right side of the highway that really denotes the, the road of travel and the shoulder. So the question, whether briefly crossing over the fog line onto the shoulder with your right or your left side tires on interstate highway a single time is a violation of the law that requires drivers to drive on the right half of the roadway. There may be some question about what the definition of roadway is, but the court didn't address that. Unfortunately, for the citizens of Missouri and any other state citizens or national citizens that happen to drive on our roads, five of the seven Supreme Court judges in the state of Missouri held that it is a violation of the law for your wheels to cross over that fog line at any time. That's punishable as stated earlier by up to 15 days in jail. So if you are not a perfect driver and your wheels cross over that fog line, you could spend 15 days in a county jail. I'm pausing to let that sink in a moment. You could spend more than two weeks in jail just because your wheels crossed over that white fog line for any reason. And this is completely regardless of the actual laws we have in place. Now, we'll go on a little bit more. Two of our Supreme Court judges, uh, Judge George Draper and Judge Laura Denver Stith, stood up and said no. And their dissenting opinion, which is also published, uh, you can look it up with the same case number, um, is actually quite a good read, and I like the opinion a great deal. The facts that the majority relied upon, as related by Mr. Ward here, to justify the officer pulling Mr. Smith over, and we can give you a little bit of background on the Smith case. On January 8th of 2017, Smith was stopped by Sergeant S.B. Johnson, Missouri State Highway Patrol, on Interstate 70 in Montgomery County. According to Sergeant Johnson's testimony, Smith's vehicle drew his attention because he noticed that on several occasions, the vehicle's turn signal turned on, but was then turned off before a lane change was completed, fully completed. Shortly thereafter, Sergeant Johnson observed passenger side tires of the vehicle appear to completely cross the fog line on the right side of the roadway. He could see pavement between the fog line and the tire and observed the tire was no longer within the lane of traffic. 
Sergeant Johnson initiated a traffic stop and Smith pulled over to the side of the road. Now the reason this became a an appellate case to a Supreme Court case as opposed to remaining a uh, ticket that somebody might just simply pay a hundred bucks for is what's explained in the next paragraph of the court opinion and it really comes down to this is a drug possession case. During the stop Sergeant Johnson smelled marijuana. When asked by Sergeant Johnson, Smith admitted that he had smoked marijuana in the vehicle the week prior and that there was in fact currently marijuana in the vehicle. Sergeant Johnson searched the vehicle and found marijuana cigarettes in a backpack in the passenger compartment and approximately four pounds of marijuana in the trunk. Smith was charged with felony possession of controlled substance. He filed a motion to suppress the physical evidence and incriminating statements, arguing that merely crossing the fog line is insufficient probable cause to initiate traffic stop in Missouri and legally signaling an intention to change lanes creates no reasonable suspicion or probable cause for detention. The circuit court overruled the motion to suppress that evidence came in. He was ultimately found guilty of felony possession of controlled substance. His seven year sentence was suspended. He was placed on probation for five years. The appeal subsequently followed and after an opinion by the Court of Appeals, which went contrary to Mr. Smith, uh, the Missouri Supreme Court granted transfer and took the case on. Turning back to what Mr. Ward wrote, the fact that the majority relied upon to justify the officer pulling Mr. Smith over was that he was driving in the far right lane on I-70 in Montgomery County. That, that portion of I-70 is a divided four lane highway, two lanes traveling in each direction. He was in the right lane and at that time the, the trooper observed the right side tires of his vehicle crossing the white line commonly known as the fog line. Trooper testified that he had only observed this once and that he recalled he could see a space between the outside of Smith's right side tires and the inside of the fog line. In all other aspects the trooper testified Smith otherwise complied with the law and was not driving erratically. During the course of the stop Smith of course admitted to possessing marijuana and he was arrested for felony possession. Now what we should be concerned with is that in reaching their decision the Supreme Court majority totally ignored the language of RISMO 304.015.5 subsection 1 which states quote Whenever any roadway has been divided into three or more clearly marked lanes for traffic, the following rules, in addition to all others consistent herewith, shall apply. 1. A vehicle shall be driven, quote, as nearly as practicable entirely within a single lane, end quote, and shall not be moved from such lane until the driver is first ascertained that such movement can be made with safety. Now, as nearly as practical. I want you to think about that for a second because that doesn't say you cannot ever deviate from that line of traffic. It says as nearly as practicable. So the Supreme Court decision that was reached appears to be in direct conflict with a state statute that appears to also to be directly on point. Now look fog line issues have been argued in courts for years mostly with DWI cases because it's an argument why I pulled them over and it leads to DWI and these have been argued and fought in multiple states and courts and the courts across the country have interpreted the exact same language and have held that briefly crossing the fog line even a couple of times is not a violation of the law. By including this language the legislator recognized that none of us are perfect. None of us are perfect drivers and that nobody can be expected to maintain a perfect vector down the center of a lane of traffic. Now, in other words, you could inadvertently cross that white fog line with the outside edge of your tires even for a second, but if you do, you are now a criminal, punishable by up to 15 days in the county jail and a fine of $750 or both. That poses a big problem. Then if the officer approaches you and smells the odor of a glass of wine that you may have had with dinner and you happen to be like me, you have bad knees, I tore my knees out when I was younger um, and you can't do the walk and turn or the one leg stand test because of age or physical disabilities you're going to go through what is essentially the unthinkable. You're going to get cuffed and stuffed. You'll probably be charged with a DWI. You'll have to bond yourself out maybe. You're definitely going to have to hire an attorney and spend 
thousands of dollars on your defense. It is not a pleasant thing, but you're going to go to jail that at that moment. And chances are you are not a perfect driver. I mean, hell, I just drove to Columbia yesterday. I'm pretty sure my tires went over the fog line at least once. So this Mr. Ward described as, in his opinion, one of the worst decisions ever by the Missouri Supreme Court. I am not going to say it's one of the worst decisions ever by the Missouri Supreme Court, not because I can directly point to a worse decision, but because I am not as knowledgeable in every decision the Missouri Supreme Court has ever made, and I would not want to over-restrict the incompetence of anyone. That said, this, this opinion is horrendous. I'm going to turn to the foot, one of the footnotes, because one of my law professors, uh, Professor Esbeck at University of Missouri, used to always say, the good stuff is in the footnotes. And you know what? More and more as I, I practice law, I see that he is right more and more. So in footnote number eight, this, and it starts on page seven of the opinion, it says, the dissenting opinion suggests any violation of section 504.015 should be based on the length and severity of the driver's deviation from the roadway to the shoulder. But section 304.015 makes no exceptions for quote, momentary, end quote, or minor deviations, however they may be defined. Moreover, the issue is not whether Smith's conduct was sufficient to warrant a conviction for violating Section 304.015. The issue, rather, is whether there was probable cause to believe Smith committed a traffic violation when he crossed the fog line. There is also no exception in Fourth Amendment jurisprudence for traffic violations that are commonplace amongst otherwise law-abiding citizens. As the Supreme Court has observed, quote, petitioners urge that the multitude of applicable traffic and equipment regulations is so large and so difficult to obey perfectly that virtually everyone is guilty of violation, permitting the police to single out almost whomever they wish for a stop. But we are aware of no principle that would allow us to decide at what point a code of law becomes so expansive and so commonly violated that infraction itself can no longer be the ordinary measurement of lawfulness for enforcement. And even if we could identify such exorbitant codes, we do not know by what standard or what right we would decide, as petitioners would have us do, which particular provisions are sufficiently important to merit enforcement, end quote. And that's a quote from the Wren case, and it, you know, you can look it up if you like, but you probably don't want to. Um, the essence of this is that they're arguing first that violating the law they, they can't overlook because everybody violates the law but at some point if you have that kind of rampant civil disobedience to the law there's a question about whether or not that law even merits existence much less enforcement which is one of the reasons why they won't allow anybody to talk to the jury is about jury nullification because the jury could in fact say you know what I'm gonna find the person not guilty because we don't like the law and there's no blowback for a jury if they choose to do that. They can't be arrested, they can't be charged, they actually have the right to do that. Um, but we can't tell them. The essence of, of this, and the important thing is, when the section that I read to you, as nearly as practicable, entirely within a single lane, what that means is that the legislator has already made allowances for a momentary diversion, for a, an occasion, you know, a, a break with that. And a, that the length and severity of the driver's deviation, you know, must be considered. So this Supreme Court decision is wrong. They misstate and misunderstand the law and God damn it, they did it deliberately. The solution for this, as Mr. Ward has said, is legislative. Okay, you've got to contact your legislature. You've got to talk to your reps and your state senators. And you've got to say, hey, you must fix this. And the way they fix this is by amending this statute to say 
Uh, they can put another clause in there and they can call it the Supreme Court wake up clause that says you absolutely cannot arrest and charge somebody or stop somebody for a single or you know a low number of violations. Now that, that can be written. Look, the defense bar is going to be talking to the legislators and senators too. There are going to be some people that will come up and they'll write something, but you've got to pressure your your legislator. You've got to pre pressure your state rep and your state senator to actually take action on it because this has to be fixed. There is um, a presumption in law that the legislator is aware of what the Supreme Court decides. And there are actually people tasked by the legislature to watch Supreme Court decisions and bring that back to the um, state reps and state senators so that they can act upon it and pass what laws need to be passed. So hopefully they're doing that and they're going to pay attention to it. But this is something that needs to be fixed and needs to be fixed soon because it is going to throw jurisprudence and how we handle criminal cases into well, a frickin' blender, man. I mean, you've given, you have given cops, and I'm not talking about the good ones, but you've given the bad cops a license to lie for the rest of their career. I mean, I've seen a highway patrol officer testify, well, yeah, I, I saw him cross the fog line before I turned my lights and my camera on. Um, he didn't do it while he was on camera, but he did it before I turned my, my flashers on. Um, okay, you're going to see things like that coming up because it'll be untrackable. It's the trooper's word, and if you cross the fog line even once, that's grounds for a stop. You're going to see a lot of fog line stops instead of the other lie that is used a lot with the license plate lamp being out. Um, God, I can't tell you how many videos we've looked at where the trooper says he stopped them because their license plate lamp wasn't lit. But then when the person turns their car off while they're in front of the trooper, the license plate lamp goes off on camera. And this is what this is what we're seeing. Um, this is a very important legal issue in the state of Missouri. Uh, given that it's by a state supreme court in the state of Missouri, it may well also carry some persuasive effect for those of you that do not live in Missouri, which means your state supreme courts may consider the logic and reasoning in the Missouri State Supreme Court's opinion and adopt to that. So, and that happens between the sister states. So that is something that you all need to be paying attention to. So there's been some background noise in this video. Right there. It's creaking. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to guess it has to do with the massive amount of Ice, snow, we didn't get much snow, but we got enough to trap a lot of water and to turn the freezing rain we had from a sheet of freezing rain to an ice coat that's about an inch, inch and a half thick on the roof of my building. So we're in here, we're shooting, we're listening to this creaking, and we're hoping, by God, we get this done before the roof collapses and you know takes out my staff. Thank you for watching. Please hit the like and subscribe. Hit the alert button so you know when our next video comes out. For the love of God, pay attention to what is happening in your courts. It will affect your life in a very direct and immediate manner.